everyone and welcome back to another episode of Endangered Art. As you can see by our thumbnail, today's focus is going to be on the Caribbean flamingos, also known as the American flamingos. Now when you think of flamingos, the first color that comes to mind is pink, but as you can see in the video here, they also have vibrant shades of orange and red. And those bright colors are a result of the food they eat, which includes shrimp and crustaceans. So now that we learned a little bit about flamingos, let's get started on our painting. So gather up your art supplies, and in this next screen, you'll see all the colors that you need to start your painting. So I'm going to do what I always do with my paintings. I'm going to wet the entire canvas with water before laying down any paint. And once we're done with the water, I'm going to do the same thing but with white paint. You can see I'm just getting my bottle of white paint and just squirting some directly on the canvas. I want to put enough on so that I coat the entire canvas with white paint. This is going to help us blend our colors together. Next, go ahead and wash your brush off and we're going to start putting some color in our background using some light blue paint. We're going to start painting the background which is going to be our water scene for our flamingos. We're going to start with our light blue, working from the top going all the way down to the middle of the canvas. And as you're painting, you're going to see streaks of white color blending in with the blue. That's what we want. This is going to create a water-like effect and give our background some texture. That way we don't have one big boring block of blue paint as our background. And the closer we get to the bottom, you'll see that there's a little bit of a gradient there. And if you want to add more light blue, make sure you don't completely erase all the white that we put on there though. Next we're going to do the same thing but with our darker blue and we're going to work from the bottom going towards the middle and once those two colors meet we're going to blend them together. And you also notice that I'm not completely drying off my brush because you want just a little bit of water to help smooth that paint out. As you can see I went back and add a little bit more water to my brush. But just be careful, don't put too much, because then that's when it gets a little bit too runny and the colors get too thin. This paint's a little bit thick, so you kind of need a little bit of water. So you can see it's starting to look like water. All those streaks are giving it a ripple effect. And we're going to add more colors to this background before we start putting our flamingos in. And also notice I'm not being very technical with the way I paint. I'm just doing random streaks. So 
So I switched out my large brush for a smaller brush and we're gonna start adding some purple to the bottom. And this is again just to give it some depth and also a little bit of color. That purple is gonna make the pink and the red stand out once we start putting our flamingos in. So you wanna build up color in the background. And you can put as much purple as you want I know everybody's water is going to look a little different. Also check it out, I'm not being very fancy with my strokes, I'm just doing broad strokes across the canvas, nothing fancy. This is really relaxing to do. We're going to add some yellow, and that's going to be the sunlight that's reflecting off of the water. And make sure you put a little bit towards the middle of the painting, not just towards the top. But once again, you can always add as much as you want to any part of the painting. Maybe where your flamingos are, it's nighttime. Maybe it's early in the morning. It's completely up to you. So right here, you're going to want to take a break and pause the video for a few minutes. This is to let your canvas dry. This is really important before we start painting our flamingos. But if you're ready to proceed with the next step, get your smallest brush and we're going to start using our pink paint. Now to start off painting the flamingos, you're going to want to make a small blob. And you'll also notice I'm very loose with the way I sketch these out. I'm just doing a light sketch with this painting. And then if I like the shape, I'll just keep continuing with it. So I'm going to make one pointed over here to the left. And his neck is kind of like a question mark or a, a U. You have to remember their necks are very bendy. And then just remember to give it kind of a, a triangle at the end of the neck to kind of make that head. And we're going to make a couple flamingos because flamingos love to live in large groups. Very rarely you'll see a flamingo just hanging out by himself. They're very bad at social distancing. They like to live in big groups and very close together. We don't want him to be lonely. So this one over here to the right, I'm going to have him pointing downwards. And this is going to be our mama flamingo. I'm going to paint a baby with this one later. But it could also be the dad, you know. Both female and male take care of their offspring. They actually take turns feeding them too. Both the female and the male can regurgitate food for their offspring. So they both share the responsibility of raising their chicks, which is pretty cool. So we're going to do some flamingos over here in the mid-ground. So you want some in the mid-ground, foreground, and we're going to do some way in the top. Just to create some nice depth. And once again, we're going to try and cover this whole thing with flamingos. And you can add as many or as little as you want. It's up to you. You can add as many flamingos as you want to this painting. As you can see, I'm not very detailed with this. Like I said, just do like little strokes. You know, sketch out how you think the flamingo is going to look like. 
So remember, they're kind of fluffy, so give them that fluffy feather effect. Also, I'm going to start layering some of the darker pink that I have here. This is kind of like a magenta, as you can see right there. I put it a little closer to the screen. So you can just mix that dark pink in with the light pink. And then for the flamingos way in the back because they're further away, I'm going to start off painting them with the darker pink. And you'll notice I didn't blend those colors together for the flamingos in the middle. That's fine. Like I said, texture is a good thing. You don't want a flat, perfect painting. You want something that has energy to it, personality, something that's very unique. So add some of that dark pink to the ones in the foreground. And I'm just doing it to highlight the darker areas of the flamingo. And you'll see the ones in the middle. It also helps define which ones are separate from other flamingos. You see, I kind of like the way the sketch came out on the back, so I'm going to keep working with it and keep developing the shape. And this is just me playing with the shapes. So now I'm going to start adding more colors onto their feathers. I'm going to put in some red just towards the bottom of their wings. If you take a look back at the flamingos that we had in the beginning of the video, you'll notice they have a lot of the red towards the bottom, closer to their wings. Also a fun fact about flamingos, once they shed their feather, it actually loses their color. It goes back to gray. So we're going to add some white to the top and that's just going to help lighten the colors and give it some streaks because they also had streaks of white throughout their colors too. Like they're not just one block of pink color. They actually do have a lot of different shades to them and they don't even stay the same shade of pink throughout their lives. Throughout their adult lives, flamingos will actually get lighter, get darker. Once they have chicks of their own, they actually lose their color and they turn a very pale pink. So flamingos are never just the same color pink their whole lives. They like to mix it up a lot. So if you start to like the shape of your flamingos, this is where you can start blending those colors in. But make sure you keep it streaky. I kind of do this impressionist style where it's very loose kind of abstract impressionism, I guess what you would call it. I like to be very loose with my paintings, not very detailed. But if you want to be more detailed, go for it.
I put a little bit of gray underneath some of these flamingos just to give it some shading. Also a little bit of purple mixed with pink. I'm going to make a brand new color. Kind of mix it in with that gray just to add more shading. I want to give these flamingos a lot of color. I know there might not be any purple on flamingos, but in this world, we're going to put purple on flamingos. So right now we're at a really good point in our painting where we can decide how bright we want our flamingos to be. You can add more pink, red, purple, orange. I'm going to add a little bit more orange to mine and blend in those colors. So now we're going to start working on some detail with our small brush and some white paint. We're going to make the beaks of our flamingos. And it's just going to be like a pointed, a long pointed triangle. Like this one is kind of pointed down. Let's make sure it has like a hook to it. And we're going to put the baby flamingo right here, the baby chick. Make them nice and fluffy just like how we saw in the video. And it's okay if you bleed into the pink color of the face of the flamingo, that's all right. The great thing about acrylic paint, if you make a mistake, just let it dry and then you can paint right over it. Even this canvas that I'm using right now actually had another painting on before it and I just waited for it to dry, covered it in white paint and reused it again. Save myself a little money, you know, recycle an old canvas. It's a win-win. So with our black paint and our small brush, just put a little bit of black at the end of those beaks. We'll also use this to make the eyes of our flamingos too. You can see already they're starting to look like flamingos. I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. Hopefully you guys are too. Once again, don't stress yourselves out about your painting being perfect. I'm going to tell you something that my art teacher used to tell me in my ceramics class is that you have to let your painting be ugly before it's pretty. 
And it took me so long to realize what he meant by that. But when you start off a painting or a drawing, at least when I start one off, I usually don't like it at the beginning because you automatically think that you're going to paint something amazing. But you know, you have to work at it. You have to blend your colors together, build stuff on top of other colors. And then at the end, you're going to be like, you know what? I really like this painting. I like the way it came out. And you can see the flamingos, they look a little rough around the edges. So if you want to add more, you see this one doesn't really have much of a head. So I'm going to add more paint to the top of his head. So it looks like he had a big old dent in his head. So you can always go back and add more details. There's nothing wrong with taking a break and then coming back to a painting. So we're going to put some more detail on our baby chick. <clears throat> so with a little bit of gray paint, just kind of blend it in with that white that we put in. Remember, they're supposed to be fluffy. So give it a little texture. And also make sure you give him a little beak. And put some detail there and make it look like he has a, a wing. Now he's starting to look more like a chick. See? See how easy that was? Wasn't even doing anything fancy. I'm just kind of blending the colors together. And then I'm just putting a small black dot right in the center of the flamingo's face to give it like an eye. Make it look like they're looking at something. So I'm going to mix some paint together, some black, some red, make it a dark red, and that's going to be the legs of our flamingos. I'm going to make it more red. Because believe it or not, they have bright red legs. I'm going to put more, more color to that. And remember, when you're making the flamingos legs, they don't bend forward like our legs do they bend backwards so make sure you put that bend the other way i know it's going to look like they have a broken leg but that's how the flamingo's legs bend so give each of your flamingos a set of legs you can have you can even have them standing on one leg which is what they love to do So once you add the legs, if you want to just cover them up slightly so it looks like they're underneath them. You can see it's making them look more fluffy too. want those fluffy feathers. So now we're using a clean brush, let's say my medium size one, small maybe, small medium, it's a sh medium. So we're going to mix green, some blue, and we're going to start making some grass. 
I want it to look like they're in the wetlands. It's kind of coming out more blue than green, so I'm going to keep mixing. Create my own custom color here. So you can see it's kind of like a blue-green. And we're just going to do strokes going upwards. That's going to be our grass. You can also switch it out to a bigger paintbrush. It's easier to use the ones that have a flat edge to them. And we're going to keep building this grass up with different colors. Because once again, you don't want to have just one block of the same color everywhere. I love a painting with a lot of different colors in it. And this is where you can get creative again. If you want to add a different scene to the background, maybe in your wetlands there's a tree in the center. You can also add a flamingo nest for the baby chick and the parents. You know, be creative with it. Now with a clean brush, I'm going to use some yellow, mixing it in with the green on the same brush, and then adding some highlight to that grass. And you can see it's already bringing out those bright colors in the pink there. And make sure you let those colors blend together. Like I'm using a pretty good amount of paint when I'm doing this. So that dark green is mixing in with our yellow and giving us those nice streaks of color.
And now I'm just going to add more until I feel like I have enough. I'm going to create happy little bushes all throughout this painting. It's no mistakes, just happy accidents. and just create some last ones right here i don't know about you but i always like feel like i'm never done with my painting i always like to mess with it and sometimes you just have to tell yourself to put the paintbrush down and enough's enough because if you keep messing with it you're probably going to be unhappy with it but i'm just going to add a couple more before i stop these will be the last ones Hopefully. Almost forgot to put an eye for our baby chick. And now you can see we are done with this painting. Hopefully you guys are happy with the way it came out. I want to see what your paintings look like. So send us a picture on our social media. We have our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And also leave a comment down below for an animal that you'd like to see in our next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thanks everyone.